In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IG5240 color bar and dot generator. In another video on the Heathkit IG28, I covered background information on color bar and dot generators and the different models offered by Heathkit. You can refer to that video for more information. The IG5240 is a color generator used for generating test signals used for television servicing and alignment. It can generate 16 different television test patterns determined by the positions of four slide switches. The IG5240 was offered from 1976 to 1984. It was one of a series of test pattern generators made by Heathkit from the 1950s through the 1990s when they left the kit business. The IG5240 typically sold for about $75 US. Offered as a kit, there was also an assembled model SG5240 that sold for a little higher in price. Called a color generator, it operates from two 9-volt batteries with a claimed battery life of at least 8 hours of use. It was the first portable color generator offered by Heathkit. It produces RF output only, no direct video signal, and doesn't generate an audio test signal. Output is at least 5,000 microvolts into 300 ohms. It normally outputs on channel 4, but could use channel 3, for example, if a strong signal in your area interfered with channel 4, by ordering a different crystal from Heathkit, or by ordering one as per the specs in the manual. It outputs NTSC format video only, so it was not suited to European televisions. The blue plastic case, I believe they called the material Psycholac, a trade name for ABS, was typical of Heathkit test equipment of this era. On the rear are two momentary push buttons for power on and off. The unit will also auto power off after a period of time. The manual says after more than five minutes. My unit measured at about 10 minutes. On the front, four slide switches select from a total of 16 test patterns, all of which are illustrated on the front of the unit. The patterns are grouped into color, crosshatch, dots, and horizontal and vertical bars. A color level thumb wheel control adjusts the color intensity of the three color patterns. The RF output comes out on two hardwired alligator clips which could be attached to a television's antenna terminals. The inside circuitry is contained on two printed circuit boards. The circuit uses one IC, five transistors, six diodes, and three crystals. The top board is the RF oscillator circuit that contains most of the analog circuitry and discrete components. The bottom board is the video circuit that includes the color bar generator, its oscillator crystal, and the four pattern select switches. The IC is a National Semiconductor MM5322 color bar generator chip, which essentially does all the work of generating the test patterns. The two 9-volt batteries fit between the circuit boards, and you need to open the case to replace them. It uses three crystals, 377 kilohertz for the IC clock, 3563 kilohertz for the video color generator and 67.25 megahertz for the channel 3 RF output. The circuit is similar to the sample circuit shown by the manufacturer on the data sheet for the MM5322 with the addition of the power on off circuit. Apparently Heathkit patented this auto power off circuit. To test the unit I needed a television with an analog NTSC input. This LCD screen TV works somewhat, but doesn't sync well to most of the patterns or show color. Typically you're supposed to turn off AFC and use manual fine tuning to adjust for the best pattern. Most modern TVs like this one don't support turning off AFC or tuning. I also have an NTSC monitor but it doesn't have an RF input, only video. So here I'm using a VCR to demodulate it and output the video to the monitor. This works a little better than the LCD TV. Here are some of the patterns. Finally, here I'm using it with an old Admiral black and white television from the 1950s. 
It works quite well with the bar patterns, but obviously can't display color. I bought this unit on eBay in September of 2017. It appeared to be in good condition. It didn't come with an original manual, but I found copies of the schematic and full manual on the internet. It had two 9-volt batteries inside, which were dead. Putting in new batteries, I saw some video output signal on my oscilloscope. I then hooked it up to a TV and performed the initial tests and adjustments as outlined in the manual. This consists of adjusting the core of inductor L2 for a good raster display on channel 4, and then backing it off a quarter turn. Then the color adjust trimmer C9 is adjusted for proper display of the color bars. In summary, the IG5240 is useful for testing analog televisions, which are now mostly obsolete in North America. It's interesting to compare it in size to the Heathkit IG28 in the background, which is line powered and much larger and heavier. The small size and power consumption of the IG5240 is mostly due to the use of the color bar generator IC instead of a lot of discrete circuitry. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.